Robert Carnicom is our guest talking about chemtrails. There's only one part of the chemical biological testing going on against us. I would say that it's kind of a dual axis. We've got uh, everything happening with the in, in the air, in the water. Uh, they poison the water. They poison the air. They've been caught right-handed doing it. They institutionalize uh, what they're doing right in front of our faces many times. It's the arrogance, the sodium fluoride and the stannous fluoride and the rest of it, documented to be deadly poison. But then you have the vaccines. They're also poisoning you through those. See, if, if, if they're admitted to have done all this horrible stuff in the past, how do you then now trust them to take your vaccines? If, if one of the biggest pharmacological companies in the world, Bayer, would knowingly put AIDS virus in your, in your uh, drugs, knowingly, knowingly, and hepatitis C, knowingly, knowing it was in there and still selling it, then what would the government and these other groups do? So I don't want to hear it's too dastardly, too big. Clifford Carnicom, how did you wake up to this? and then get into the atmosphere manipulation and then shift into uh, the biological effects of that, but then the biological effects of the other spring we know is going on. My work started at the very beginning of 1999, Alex, in uh, February, and um, we go outside quite a bit. Uh, my wife and I go camping quite a bit, and I have a background that's uh, outdoors quite a bit. And I live in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is a high desert region, uh, certainly uh, one of the classic regions for uh High desert, blue skies, just beautiful vistas. Many artists live here uh, because of that. And so it's actually an ideal laboratory if a person wants to be in a certain place to examine this issue. And um, February 14th, it was Valentine's Day, was, was the day that I actually started to work. And it had been preceded by several weeks of noticing a pattern that we would head out on our trips for the morning of the weekend uh, it would look absolutely beautiful when we would wake up. Very, very typical weather conditions for the high desert southwest. And then uh, we'd have breakfast, and about an hour and a half later we'd go out, and the, and the weather had completely changed. And uh, that was acting really at a subconscious level for two to three weeks. And then on that, uh, February 14th, I, I was out the door. At the time, it was still uh, perfectly blue, and this aircraft uh, went directly overhead. And what was different this time is I just watched. There was, I, I'm sure it was being triggered at a subconscious level. But this time I just stood and I just watched, and I watched the transition take place for, for the first time. And, and the amazing thing is that a major transition, transition can actually take place in about a half hour of time uh, if the operation is large enough. So you can completely transform uh, the atmosphere in a, in a regional area in a fairly short you period of time. You can watch a clear sky, sky be totally filled with these trails that just stay there. Oh, I've counted in, in a couple, couple times. I have counted... Uh, over a hundred passes, you can't say individual aircraft, but over a hundred passes uh, within a two-hour period. Uh, they just blanket the sky and completely alter it. And so I started taking photographs uh, and showed that progression for the very first time that you had an unnatural uh, situation that was taking place. And I simply opened the door by posting the photographs on the on the website and really just raised the issue. I mean, that's that's sort of my style. I wasn't trying to. I knew it was wrong. At a gut level, I knew it was wrong. Uh, at the very least, you would call this a question of, of pollution. And the website started, and at that point, uh, it was very fairly clear uh, very soon that there was an interest in my work um, by um, military, um, industrial, uh, chemical, uh, pharmaceutical, medical, uh, chemical complex. Uh, it was very shortly after you would find, and I was a, just an individual, really pretty low-key person. I was a quiet and conservative federal employee. They were living but, on your but, website. But I was drawing attention very early in the game because my work is, is uh, more of an analytical nature, that's for sure. It's you know observation and analysis, that's my background. And um, then it started from there, and from that point on, I started my work and, and ended up, I spent a probably good six years. The past uh, year, I have not been actively involved in research because I've reached uh, really thresholds of what I can do. It does look like there's another subject I'm going to be getting involved in. But there are literally uh, thousands of pages, I would assume, that I have written now over six years and devoted pretty much my entire life uh, to this issue to basically call alarm. That was my that was my purpose, uh, to call alarm. This is not something that is solved by a person. This is not something you... Yeah, look certainly. To. You're, just, you're just alerting people to something strange I, going on. That, so, that when did this start? Here. For me, I mean, for me, in about 97, 98, I began to notice that trails that disappeared within a minute maximum would, would be there four or five hours later. Clear skies would be turned into these trails that just expanded and merged. And then NASA comes out and says, suddenly the Earth is 20% darker. Uh, just on the weather control angle of this, what's going on? Well, I, would, I did want to mention, you know, as you said, uh, there's a lot of things uh, to this, and it's very true. 
and people do have a tendency to, uh, I would say, either simplify it or avoid it because it's too complex, uh, either either or. Um, and it is a complex issue, and, and over a period of six, seven years, I have evolved to where there's about seven areas that I think are involved in. Well, let's, let's run through the gamut, run the gauntlet with you on the other side. Clifford Carnicom, website's carnicom.com. We have a link to it up on infowars.com. Uh, just vital information that this man has done. So many other great researchers, but he was the trailblazer. We'll be right back.